Welcome to our AI tools for schools using tools with students. I am so excited to be able to give this bite sized PD because it means that we have AI tools that are approved for use with your students, which I think is awesome. So you're watching this as a asynchronous option, which means we're going to go ahead and get started. Throughout this presentation, you may be asked to pause or access different things. The slides will be available with this recording, so if you want to do that, you're welcome to pause and come back to continue watching instruction or to explore more. So just to get started, sorry, we'll exit it out there. Um, some professional development norms. First, as you're here, be a learner, be focused on improving student outcomes, commit to implementing the learning strategies that you're gonna to hear today. That's part of our ICANN statement, which we're gonna cover in just a second. And then be responsible. This is a asynchronous training. So if you need to pause and come back so you can focus, that's totally fine. Um, be respectful. So make sure that as you're listening, that you're using the technology that you're being asked, asked to access and then make sure you're being safe. So again, pause if you need to take care of your needs or if there's other things that you need to do, then make sure you go ahead and do that. So I just want you to take a second, pause the video and think about a norm that you would like to focus on. Wonderful, thank you for selecting that. All right, so our learning intentions for today is that first that you can define how to access the student approved tools. So where do you look? Explore approved AI tools to use with students. So we're gonna actually look at three of them today. I'm gonna to preview some of those for you. And then create a plan to use AI tools with your students. So I want you to take some action from what you're seeing today. You'll know that you're successful when you can access those student approved tools and to create a plan to use one of the AI tools explored with students. This is our MTSS framework or our multi-tiered system of support. Today, we're looking at instructional content. So how do you deliver that instruction? and standards-based instruction and reporting. We're gonna show a tool that'll give you some feedback, things like that, but connecting back to strong instruction for classrooms and high quality um, academic instruction. So a little bit about me, my name is Emma Moss. I am a teacher specialist here in the Canyon School District office in the Instructional Supports Department. I am a digital teaching and learning specialist, and I currently serve as our um, AI project lead. So I manage and help support all of AI across Canyon School District and many places in the state. So I'm excited to be here to talk and share with you today. So this is what we have. Um, we're going to do a welcome. So we've kind of gone through a welcome, our norms, our intentions, and we're here on the agenda. So we should be about five minutes in now. Um, we're going to spend about five minutes accessing approved tools, then spend the bulk of our time together doing some tool modeling and exploration. And this may be where you'd like to pause and explore some of the options. And then we'll wrap up and I'll share some resources and give you your next steps moving forward. So that's where we're headed. So I wanted to start with a video and we use something called the Learn Platform to manage approved tools. So as you're watching, I want you to think about why do we use this platform? And to model best teaching practices, I put a sentence down here, learn platform can be beneficial because. So if that helps you frame your thinking, go ahead and think about that.
Okay, so I just wanted you to take a second. You don't need to contact them for a demo because we have it here in Canyon School District, but take a second and just pause the video and reflect. Why do we use the learning platform and how can it be beneficial? Wonderful. I know for me, this is a big thing to help organize. I love how they called it the wild, wild west, but it's a way I can see what's been approved and what's available. So let's go ahead and access that. I'm going to come out of this window, but this is um, to get there for canyons. We just need to go learn.canyonsdistrict.org. And I already have this pulled open. So when you come to this website, it will make you log in. You just use your regular first name dot last name. Um, and then your password that you use like for a computer. And here you can see this is the whole Canyons District Library. And it shows you lots of different tools. Um, you can look at approval status. So you can say like, hey, um, this was denied and this is why, reviewed and denied, it's a staff use only. Um, you can look at the privacy status of things, um, whether it collects personal, personally identifiable information, that's what PII is. Um, you can also look by subject level. So let's say you are um, an English, let's do English language and literature. Here are some tools that help with English language development. So we've got Dreambox and Doc Tools and Commonlit, um, things here um, that are in process of being approved. Google Translate. Um, you can also see things here like this was reviewed and denied and this is why. Um, and this one's pending, so it's still working through the process of approval. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that. I don't want those selected anymore. Refresh my screen. Hold on. I'm just going to go back to learn.canyonsdistrict.org. There we go. So in this library, you can search for the different tools that we have. So like, for example, um, you could say, you may have heard of Magic School. Okay, so this one here, you can see Magic School is currently a staff use only. So um, that's not something you can use for students, but maybe you've also heard of something like um, Curapod. You can see it there, it's approved for use. If it says approved for use, um, you can actually click in and look at the details. And it says compliant, approved for use, um, and it collects some information, but it is approved and you can use it for students, which is awesome. Um, another one that we're going to look at today is School AI. There it is, approved for use. So you can search by whatever criteria you want, but it's a great way to access um, um, what is approved in the district for use and, and to make sure that you're keeping your students information private. And so that's how you access tools. So that's our first um, learning intention of today. I also wanted to make you aware with accessing approved tools. Um, in our guidebook for Canyon School District, which if you go to canyonsdistrict.org slash family connections, come down to artificial intelligence, you can view our view of AI guidebook. And we're currently in development of providing a student and teacher guide, which will be added, um, if you see here in the table of context, content, it will be added as an appendix. So um, as appendix there for you to, to access. So um, just know that, that, that that will be also be there if you want a quick overview of the guide. Okay, so let's look at why you probably came here and that's to look at some of these tools, right? So um, we're gonna go ahead and get started with School AI. And I'm going to kind of walk you through a couple of things that the tools do, um, maybe spend about five minutes on each tool and show you some of my favorite parts about them. Okay, so this one is called School AI. And there's a couple of things that you'll see across the top here. So you can log in. Um, this tool does have both a free and paid version. So we call this a freemium because there's a free and a premium. So it is a freemium, um, but it has a lot of tools that you can use for free. Um, so you can discover places um, of things you can do. So if you're not sure where to start, um, they have something called Sidekick, and that is um, a use for what they call spaces. So it's creating a space for students to use AI. Um, they also have bell ringers and exit tickets that are pre-made. You come down here, they have, you can talk with a historical figure. They have things that are set up for younger students. So spaces for K3. And then here's some that are created by teachers like Haunted Math Mansion, um, 
you can search by subject in these spaces. Um, you can also do and customize some other things down here. So inside of spaces, um, I'm going to go ahead. You can see here that I have some um, spaces here. I'm going to go ahead and launch a space. You can do it from either this button or this button. And I'm going to just give my students access to a managed assistant. So what happens is it's a, it gives you a little bit of an outline. And you can tell Skykick what you want it to help students with. So I'm going to say students are learning about AI in and how to use it with their students. Um, that might be something that would be like for an adult learning. Um, I'm going to do something from a class I used to teach. So students are learning um, are learning about proper keyboarding methods and why it is important to learn to do keyboard um, with appropriate um, posture. So that would be from the digital literacy standards. You can add a class description, how you'd like to sidekick to interact with them. I'd like sidekick to act with them as a mentor. What rules do you want to set for this lesson? Um, keep students on task. Okay. And then you can st actually start a preview. So I'm not actually going to launch this space, but I'm going to show you a preview so that you can see what it looks like. So you can either speak or type into it. This is welcome. Today we're diving in the world of keyboarding. Let's start with, can you tell me what you think a good posture looks like? So I might say, uh, fingers should be on the home row and you should be sitting up straight, okay? Sitting up straight and having friends. Can you think of any reasons why this might help you type faster? Oh, I'm gonna allow that. I can't think of any reasons why. And then it helps give you an answer. And you can help, you can say, I don't want you to give a answer. I want you to keep prompting. Um, if you were to hit launch, it will give you a, I'll go ahead and do that. It'll give you a code for your students to join. So just like they're used to with like Nearpod or um, some other tools like that, like Kahoot or Gimkit. Um, this has a QR code. It also has a link, so you can publish that link straight into Canvas or send it through a program like if you're using Land School or something like that, and it allows students to have a conversation. Other things that are available here, and they do have assistance, so if you want to work AI in an education coach, that's the role AI is taking. If you want them to take a digital literacy coach approach, and they have a lot of different things that are pre-set up for you, um, as well as some tools for teachers. So on the back end, if you're looking for um, things that you'd like, there's some information there, but spaces is really the main thing you're gonna use. And inside of this discover tab, um, I'm just gonna click on this collection because I think it's fascinating. They have Book Explorer. Um, I love Dr. Seuss, so like you can click on Green Eggs and Ham. Um, and this one says yeah, it's set up to discuss themes, characters, plots. Um, those things are pre-set up for you and um, ready to go. So that's School AI. Um, I want to go ahead and head back to our next tool because I know that time is short with these bite-sized PDs. Um, let's go ahead and look at CuraPod. So there'll actually be another bite-sized training here in the future on CuraPod more in depth. And so I'm going to show you a couple things, but definitely watch that if you like this tool. So CuraPod, the best way that I've heard this tool described is it's like AI Nearpod, <laughs> um, which I love. It allows you to create lessons and then again, similarly provide a code for your students to engage with. It's really great if you're like, I want students to get um, interaction as a whole class rather than just working individually on computers. So with school AI, they would have their own individualized conversation and then you'd come back and check in. Nearpod is very much, we're moving together through this lesson and at our own pace. So there's a couple of things you can do. Um, you can do a generator of a full lesson. You can upload slides you already have and curify them. Um, they also have a cura quiz generator. Um, they have a writing superpower one. Um, you can get feedback from historical figures. Lots of things here. Um, one thing that I like is this one, this write feedback and repeat. So I'm going to jump into it. So when you come here, it will create a feedback cycle for you. So they write. You can have AI generate the feedback. 
and then students will get information about it. So I could say, um, I want you to do something at an eighth grade level about digital literacy. Okay, and I'm gonna click do magic. All right, it's gonna do some magic here. And it's gonna pull a question, what are important skills and practices? So I can see here, it's not perfect. Um, the image is generated over, but I'm gonna pull it down. Why do you think these skills are important? Um, what did you learn? And then here again, they're gonna have them do it one more time. Not, not perfect, um, but it's gonna present them the same question. And you can refine your instructions. So I could say, hey, I want all the slides to be um, green instead of blue. You can see sometimes those updates take a second. Um, I can have it regenerate. I can add all three slides. So maybe I wanna do that. So there we go. I've added all three slides with that green instead of um, the like beigey yellow. Um, and you can see here, it says join at the top of the slides as I join curie.live with the pin. Um, so from here, again, this is a very simplified model, but from here, um, I can hit present and students will be able to join. So I am actually going to join on another window. Give me one second. I'm going to join that so that you can kind of see what the students see from their end. So this is my pin. It's 686. I'm hoping it lets you see that. I don't know if it is. Okay, there we go. Uh, 686, 456, 456. So I'm going to join that. Okay, it's joining me. I put my real name is Emma. Okay, and it's actually I showing me that I have one student now. So I'm only going to give me 30 seconds to answer this question. You notice you can change the time. I'm going to hit play. The thriving pizza is good. Okay. So start that activity and it's going to count them down and you're going to notice on the teacher end, it's going to have here a couple of things. So it tells me how many students are in and I can see that that's thriving pizza is my name, which is really helpful for middle school students. I can add time if I want. So I'm actually going to add 30 seconds, which is a helpful feature. And then I'm actually going to come over to our window and write. So I think an important skill for students to have in eighth grade is lateral reading. This helps them um, verify information on what they should know. Okay, I'm just gonna keep it short and hit submit. Um, then, uh, because I have one student, it says, great, give feedback. So it pulls up their responses, you can see it, and it pulls up the feedback that's loading. So student sees it on their end, and I see it on my end as a teacher. So it's a fantastic start. It's very common with CurePod to give you like a really positive message. You mentioned a very important skill called lateral reading. Think about of when you might use lateral reading. How might you do this? You're on the right track. I can't wait to read more of your ideas. Okay, so it kind of sandwiches those comments. So it's kind of like, hey, this isn't quite enough information. And then the next one you can look at like, what did you learn from your feedback? Have students reflect on what they learned and then have them write again. So that's a really helpful feature. Um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and um, end this lesson. So I can show you a couple more things, but it'll give you a reports, um, participation report. It'll show you things that they did. You can share that information. You can see your students and their name as well as the activities that you did. So it has a report section. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but CurePod is also freemium. So there's free features as well as paid features, but they have tons of activities, writing ones, um, students receive AI feedback, um, they also have a star prep specifically for Texas, uh, daily routines. They have some brain break things in here. Um, so you can have them do a would you rather, a Curie quiz, lots of cool features for you to explore on CuraPod. Okay, we're gonna go check out our last tool, which is approved to students, and that is Adobe Express. So um, you may be familiar with Adobe Express already, but I wanted to show you a couple of the AI things that they have built right into Adobe Express. So from, you can just go to adobe.com slash express. And if you scroll down, they actually have here generative AI. So you can just select that and then it'll bring up things um, that your students can use. So they have text to image, text to template, text effects, which is really cool. So I'm actually gonna do the generation with text effects real quick. So I, my name is Emma. Um, I want to generate the letter 
E made out of birthday cake. My birthday's coming up, so I'm gonna generate that. And it's going to, oh, it paused me real quick. Interesting. Hang on. Just gave me an error that said it wasn't available. So we're gonna try that one more time and see what happens. Maybe we'll try it up here with text to image. So um, generate a birthday cake um, with uh, purple sprinkles. Let me try this. See, I'm logged in, yep. Huh. Well, apparently they're paused right now. So um, until I figure that out, I want to show you a couple of places you can find generative uh, resources. So uh, that was working yesterday. Of course, with technology trainings, this happens, um, but we'll get that checked out. So um, come back and check on it. But uh, down here, this is the Adobe Education Exchange. So it's E-D-E-X. So Adobe um Ed Exchange is essentially what it stands for, edexchange.adobe.com. And they have tons of free resources. One of the things that I love about that they have here is the Adobe Express Creative Challenges. Um, so this creative challenge here, one of the ones that they have that most recently have done is one that they called Creative Alter AI Ego. So this is in November, um, but it has, when you come into these creative challenges, they have instructions for your students. They are step-by-step. -step. They have learning objectives that connect with them as well as tools. So Adobe Express is used. And then they have templates. So you can click the image and it will open a template right up for you to be able to utilize, which is really great. So you could link that link into Canvas or Land School or whatever your tool you're using. And then students would be able to access that. So I'm not sure why those generative features aren't turned on for Adobe Express right now. Um, maybe they're having an error because they were, were working yesterday. Um, but make sure you check them out. They have instructions here just at the bottom. Um, and you can see here, like click the image, um, and you can say, hey, I want you to um, click the text next to the image so it doesn't look like that's working, but we'll figure that out. Um, you can type in words and it will generate an AI alter ego. So this is their example prompt. So again, those are on the Adobe Education Ex Exchange, so edex.adobe.com. Um, there's also some other great things you can do. You can search um, for, like here's how to make it a game. Um, and they have lots of resources. They have teaching resources. Um, they have professional learning resources. So tons of things for you to be able to utilize with your students, um, including those generative AI features. All right, so that's our overview of tools that you can use with students where you can check for them. Um, so we defined how to access those through the Learn platform. Um, we explored both School AI, HeroPod, as well as um, where you can find those Adobe AI features that you can use. Um, so now I want you to take a second. Part of knowing that you're successful is to create a plan to use one of those AI tools explored with students. So I want you to take a second somewhere near you and write down whether that's in a note on your phone, um, in a Google document, or in a send an email to yourself. Um, make a plan of how you're going to use one of those AI tools. So I'm going to give you a second to reflect, and then you can pause the video if you want, and then we'll continue. Wonderful. So hopefully you met our goals today. Um, I wanted to give you a couple more resources. If you're interested about AI, um, this is a great conversation with Sam Altman, who is the CEO of, Chat of OpenAI, which is what ChatGPT runs off of. Um, Ditch That textbook, textbook has tons of resources. This is 30 AI tools for the classroom. Um, some of these are not approved for students in Canyon School District, but many of them are approved for staff use. And so if you're looking for more tools, they're organized by categories. There's some great things you can see there. I've also linked the view of AI in Canyons, which we looked at in the Family Connection site. And then there is some reading from ISTE that has talks about um, bringing AI into schools for school leaders and for educators and how that looks. So great resources there. And then I always like to end um, my PDs with something about um, technology alone is not enough. Um, I think sometimes, especially in conversations around AI, educators feel like, oh no, like AI is going to take a right job. It's not. Nope. The best teachers are going to be the ones that know how to use the tools. And AI is just a new tool um, that we're all learning how to use. And I know that you're learning how to implement in your classrooms. And it's just not enough. It's not enough. 
Um, what makes you uniquely human is your empathy and your understanding of students and your ability to connect with them and to know what they need. And so uh, we need both you and the technology to help prepare them for their future so that they can be lifelong learners. So thanks for watching. Um, I have some source things there for you, but if you want bite size PD credit, you can go to canyonsdistrict.org slash canyonsu slash bite size PD, or just click directly on that hyperlink. I also always appreciate feedback. So if you watch this one, make sure you put in schools for tool, AI tools for schools as the name one more time, AI tools for schools um, at bit.ly. So bit.ly slash feedback for Emma, or you can scan that QR code and it'll take you directly to a Google form where you can tell me how I can do better to support you. So thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye.